What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Funboxing with Will. I am your host, Will, with H2O Co. Film and Photo, and today we're going to be doing a EDC review slash comparison on a very classic knife, uh, the Benchmade Griptilian, and we're going to be comparing this and doing a review comparison and kind of like a comprehensive history on that and the Doug Ritter Hogue, the MK1. Um, these are two very, very popular, very classic EDC knives, and they have kind of a colluded history that's kind of intertwined because they've both made knives for Benchmade, both uh, Mel Pardue and Doug Ritter. So uh, I've heard a lot of questions about the knives and pretty much like patent questions and just other random stuff. So today we're going to be discussing these two knives. So let's get into that review. Alrighty guys, uh, now before we get into the review, I just want to go ahead and as always thank all of my subscribers or anyone who's just stopped by this video here just to check it out and see if it's anything that you like. Uh, I do a lot of tech and EDC knife reviews on this channel, so if that's your thing and you find anything in this video at all informative, hit that like and subscribe button and go ahead and turn on those bell notifications to get notified when I put out new content. Other than that today, let's uh, get over to the top down setup so that we can go check out these two knives and get that comparison going. Alrighty everybody, now that we're here over at the top down setup, we can take a closer look at these two classic EDC knives. Now, before we get into this comparison and review, and I guess in detailed comprehensive review is what I'm trying to give you guys here, um, I, I'm going to preface this with saying that a lot of this information I found very confusing when I was doing my research. Um, and, and I got my sources from a lot of blade forums, and I've actually even spoken with people directly at uh, Benchmade Knives trying to figure out all this and how this all worked together with the history of these knives. And I'm still confused on a lot of it. Uh, they, even at Benchmade, couldn't answer a few of my questions. But um, getting into these uh, comparisons, the as far as the measurements go on the knife, they are identical. Uh, blade stock thicknesses and weights are different, so I'm going to go ahead and go through those. But as far as measurements, I'm just going to go ahead and use the Griptilian as measurements. So um, coming in here first, we're going to get a weight between these two. The Griptilian does come in at a lighter weight because it is manufactured with uh, FRN handle scales. They're kind of a plastic material as opposed to the G10 on the Hogue Ritter. So we're going to come in with a full weight of 3.829 ounces as opposed to the Hogue Ritter, which is coming in a little bit heavier at a 4.409 ounce weight. So each of these have a three and a half inch blade per se, really close to that. So even the four ounces is not too far off from that one inch per ounce of blade steel rule that we like to stick to, which is really nice to see. Uh, as far as measurements go, I'll just go ahead and go over them on the one knife. Uh, it is going to be an eight inch knife fully open. The cutting edge is going to be three and a half inches with a closed circumference, or I'm sorry, length of... Um, 4.75 inches. Now that goes for both knives. Now the blade stock thickness, these are, well first, these are both very full size knives. As you can see, I have a large glove hand and I can get a full four finger purchase on both knives with no problem. And I still have plenty of pommel sticking out of the back end. Um, they both run on phosphor bronze washers. They both have a ambidextrous crossbar lock and the ability to swip the, swap the clip from left or right tip up carry only. Um, these are some comparisons here. This is here next to a Benchmade bug out. Um, try to squeeze all of these in here on the frame next to a Para 3. And then just for kicks and giggles here, we'll put it next to my Inkosi. So as you can see, this is definitely a full size knife. 
Um, as far as the blade stock thickness goes here, we will check this out real quick. I do believe that the uh, sheep's foot profile on the blade is gonna be a little bit slicier of a profile. So we're gonna come in with a stock thickness of 0 0.12, uh, I'm sorry, 0 0.1125 of an inch on the stock thickness coming in behind the edge on this one with a edge of 375 thousandths behind the edge as opposed to the Doug Ritter that is coming in at a stock thickness of 0 0.1245 and then behind the edge on this one we're gonna have not so slicey of an edge with a 375 thousandths behind the edge. Um, they're pretty close, I just think this is a little bit slicey slicier geometry just in my own opinion uh, but like i said they both run off of phosphor bronze washers and they are both very fall shut knives very easily handled one-handed um, ambidextrous and pretty safe around your fingers seeing as you don't have to put your thumb in front of the blade path so these are all things that i think plus the very simple design of this knife has lent to it becoming such of a popular classic over the years um, now the history of this knife is where things get kind of weird because mel pardu releases this knife in 2001. this knife is uh, a mel pardu design and it has the access lock, which the patent on this access lock doesn't run out until 2014. So, and then from what I've found online, I don't know if this is accurate or not, but from what I've found, this knife comes out in 2004 with this lock. Doesn't make sense, because at this point, Benchmade owns the, the patent on this knife, on this proprietary locking system as well. Doug Ritter releases this knife and it, it becomes a hit the materials are upgraded as far as what you get with the base version of the 550. Originally, I believe it came out with 154 CM steel, even though now their base models come out with the uh, S30V. And it had these FRN scales as opposed to the Doug Hogue Ritter that has G10 scales and a 20 CV steel. Well then, in 2014, when the year that the, the patent runs up on this lock, Doug Ritter goes to Benchmade and makes a Doug Ritter version, the 552 version of the Griptilian. And that version has the upgraded G10 scales, not the FRN, and it has the basically the same exact composition of metal. It's just not an American-made metal. 20CV is an American-made metal, whereas M390 is not. And the Benchmade Griptilian Doug Ritter version, the 552, had the M390 steel in it. Meanwhile, from what I've done my research on, the whole time this was being manufactured by Hogue in 20 CV steel with G10 scales and partial liner locks. Again, both knives have the partial liner lock. Um, so, so then I called Benchmade and I asked them, because at some point they discontinued the, the Griptilian at Benchmade, and then after they saw that the demand was so high, they brought it back. I asked them, how is it possible that Hogue was able to produce this knife, as far as I can figure out, as far back as 2004, using the lock and the design of the Griptilian itself, but put a different name on it and put his, you know, design there and say that it's his? And they could not answer that question. They didn't know the information about the patents. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how that happened and how uh, Doug Ritter has access to the patents on this knife design while Benchmade still is using it and utilizing it. At this point, it may be an open patent, but I'm not completely sure how that worked. And I have done so much research. So if anyone out there has any more information, please feel free to, to, to let me know, educate me in the comments. Uh, I am not an expert in this by any means. And, and I don't, there's nothing in this world that I love more than learning. So if anybody has some, uh, you know, solid information on this, I I'd be more than happy to sit down and be educated on it. Uh, so please in the comments, if you know anything, let me know. But basically what we're looking at is two versions of the exact same knife, exact same measurements. Um, you know, I, I don't think that you can get the arc, uh, MK one in any other blade style other than the drop point blade. Whereas with the griptilian, you can get this same knife in pretty much any blade style you want. Drop point, clip point, this sheep's foot. Um, I do know, however, that bang for your dollar, the Hogue Ritter comes in base materials, 20 CV G10, 
at a hundred and I think around $180. Whereas the base model of the Griptilian comes in at around, I think a hundred and 50 to 160 dollars with s35 or s30 vn steel and these frn handle scales now you can get a griptilian mel pardue drop point m390 g10 scaled benchmade griptilian which is identical to this knife essentially but they want about 230 240 dollars from it at benchmade so basically if you go to hogue and pick up the doug ritter as opposed to the Benchmade, you're saving $60 and you're getting better materials. So in my personal opinion, I don't understand why anyone would buy this knife while this knife exists. Now, if this knife did not exist, of course, this is a great EDC. There's so much good about it that of course, I'd understand why everybody would want one. But while these two knives are in you know, the same category, this knife here, the Hogue Ritter, in my opinion, just beats everything about this knife out of the ballpark. Um, I've also stated in other videos about my problems with Benchmade uh, access bar locks. Every Omega spring on every Benchmade I've ever owned, funny enough, other than this specific model, have broken or fallen out of place and I've had to go to the warranty to have it repaired as opposed to the five or six Hogue knives that I own that I've never had an issue with any of their Omega Springs breaking as they use the thicker, more durable Wolf Omega Spring. And I think that they have just taken Benchmade's access lock design and they've just perfected it. And then they've called it the, the, the Able Lock. And it is, in my opinion, miles ahead of Benchmade's original version of it. You always have to give props to the originals, but you know, they're really doing a, a good job with that, that lock over there at Hogue. So I'm very happy that that patent eventually ran up. Um, so yeah, that's about it for today's comparison guys. And that brief little history, uh, I hope everything that I said was informative. And again, if there's anything that I misstated or was ignorant about, please, uh, feel free to correct me in the comments. I would love to learn more about these things. And apparently not even the people at Benchmade have the information that I'm looking for. So, uh, that's it for today. Thanks for checking it out. We're going to get back over to the top or uh, desktop setup so that we can finish up this video today, guys. Alrighty guys, well, like I said before, if you found any of this information at all informative or just interesting, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button and turn on those bell notifications to get notified when I put out new content. I really appreciate you guys coming out, checking out this video. That's it for today. Uh, other than that, we'll catch you guys later. I hope you guys have a great day. Stay safe and above all, stay creative, my friends. We need more of that in this world, especially now. Until next time. Talk to me nice